Today we get to see another reminder that, friends, if you're in law enforcement, we gotta do better than this. Hi everyone, welcome to today's badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. I'm your co-host, Mike Willibrand. and today I remembered what city we're in, Phoenix, Arizona. Today's video is sponsored by Backstreet Surveillance, Active Self Protection's trusted source for home and business surveillance. They offer free expert system design and quotes using their Backstreet Surveillance system design tool to help you build the perfect system for your application. They also offer nationwide professional installation, remote smartphone monitoring, and their revolutionary 364K camera to help you keep track of and protect that which you love. Check them out at the link in the description and thank them for bringing us today's video. 911 calls have come in. We think that the perp here is the one who actually made the phone call. They also got a call from one of the employees inside this store. Let's listen in to the badge cam as they make contact. Hello, how you doing? You guys called? Want to talk to me, my man? All right, let's go outside. How you doing, man? Let's go right here. Hmm? All right, doing good. Surveillance footage outside actually caught this as well, at least the beginning of it. You see the officer start talking to the guy, and the guy's gonna reach out in just a second and like try to grab the officer who's not gonna take it and is gonna get his taser out and put some taser on the guy, but he's not gonna stay. The prongs are gonna come out, so the guy's gonna kick and kick it off of him. We have the continuation of what happened here on the badge cam. It escalates quick. So what's going on? So I'm here because uh, stop going closer to me. But what's going on? You need to fuck out of here. Not quite up, so watch out, dude. Don't fucking touch me. Get your arms out behind your back now. I've not been able to find a name for this guy, but I do know that he was charged with aggravated assault because in Arizona, assault against a police officer is aggravated assault in our black letter law because they're a protected person. Uh, I don't know anything else about administratively if anything happened to this officer, but it did uh, create pretty good outcry here in the city of Phoenix. Hey, I can just tell you, friends, if you haven't listened to the ASP podcast in a while, you are really missing out. We've had some incredible guests recently. In fact, uh, this will probably come out after, but check it out. We have the young lady that was attacked at the gym that valiantly fought off her attacker. You guys reached out to her and said, hey, you're on active self-protection. Check it out. They wanted you on the podcast, and she was on the podcast. I will say, Mike, I think the beginning of this one, I, I think the officer handled himself pretty okay. Came in pretty chill, didn't you know, come in real badge heavy or anything like that. So I think that should be commended. We, we talk a lot in this space, John, about as a law enforcement officer, don't be the one to raise the temperature unnecessarily. And he did, he did a great job initially. He did a fine job of walking in, being professional, but casual, friendly, uh, not making things more dramatic than they need to be, and then we walk outside and, and things get pretty heated pretty quickly, obviously. Well, and I think that the officer is not the one who made them heated. Of course, you know, this guy comes in and he decides that he wants to go after the officer. Now, I'm, I'm going to say this again. You look at what he did here. What he did was assault, okay? So, so you know, you put your hands on somebody without consent with the purpose of harming them, which is what this guy did, and that is assault in Arizona, in our statutes, Arizona Revised Statutes 13-1402, that assault on a police officer is because they're a protected person considered aggravated assault. But, but I do think, listen, as a cop, when somebody puts their hands on you like that, you, you gotta be ready to go after them back and handle yourself and handle your business. Yeah, we talk a lot about firearms proficiency here, and that is very important. It's vitally important. It could save someone's life, protect your life. However, I think there's, there's a point to be made that defensive tactics are at least as important. The odds of you shooting someone versus the odds of having to go hands-on with someone, obviously going hands-on is going to happen in your career unless you just stay in a broom closet the entire time. So I, I get that we don't want to be assaulting police officers. John and I agree that was not a good idea. However, you need to be in a position as a, as a uniformed officer to be able to take somebody on physically one-on-one -on -one 
Uh, and I think the deployment of the taser here is fine. That was a great idea. It was a perfect textbook case for it. Other than the coat, maybe, but the taser did its job. The problem now is you've, once the person's down, once you pepper sprayed them or you've used your baton or your whatever, your, your, your taser, and now they're prone, now it's your job to get in there and control them, control them quickly. Well, well or Mike, let me say that if you can't control them, if your DT is not up to it, you just hold him. He's got the taser barbs in the guy. If you're like, dude, I suck with my hands. Well, call get some back up there and just hold off on him and keep the taser at bay and say, you lay there until my partner gets here and don't move. And if your DT sucks, you've got to know that and not get in on the guy. Yeah, and if your DT sucks, fix it. I mean, if, if your DT sucks and cannot be improved, it's time to go be a paramedic or something because DT is something you should be able to do as a, as a professional law enforcement officer. In, in my old agency, the thing we would have prescribed here is for him to go and put a knee, uh, a left knee on, on right shoulder, uh, not on the neck, not in the middle of the back, on the shoulder. If you can get him out prone and put the knee down and apply pressure, a very small person could keep me on the ground like that. So this sort of middle of the back pawing at him thing it doesn't work for me. It's not effective as we see here. Yeah, and, and again, now you see again, he's got his hands up like this, you know, and he's got that big kind of wind up, and this is wrong. I, and, and listen, I know a lot of people, Mike, on the channel are gonna say, well, it's that guy's fault. You attack a police officer, you get what's coming to you. O okay, except for that to me doesn't take into account proportionality. And, and listen, somebody attacking you with their hands is especially this little scrawny guy, is not to me an objective risk of death or great bodily harm to a law enforcement officer. And because of that, you got to be ready, man, when it's time to throw hands. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a lot to add to that, frankly. Um, I know I know a lot of our viewers, and God bless you for being pro-LE and, and, and pro back to blue and all that sort of thing. I do too. However, comma, there comes, a, there comes a point at which, as a law enforcement officer, you're expected to do a job in a certain way. And, and of course, I, think it, I think sometimes I don't mention it because I think it goes without saying, don't attack a police officer, obviously don't do that. But on the officer side, it's important for you to be able to control someone like this without having to resort to a firearm. I'm sorry, that's just how I feel about it. And I agree with you. Now, again, if you look, we say this all the time, the eyes are the windows to the soul, but the hands are the windows to the intent. So yes, now, of course, Phoenix PD has blurted out uh, you know, his face, so I can't see his eyes but I can see his hands and his hands here are empty and they maintain their emptiness through the entire thing. And when we say, well, I don't know if he had something in his hands. If you don't know that he has the means to do you deadly harm, then the use of deadly force is not authorized. And I think we have to live on that line because it's the place to be. You know, in this moment, right after the shove, um, I, I can tell you exactly what I would have done. I know people like to say, well, you don't know what you would have done. No, I do know what I would have done. I would have punched this kid directly in the face with a closed fist. That's what I would have done. And that almost certainly would have rung his bell and dissuaded him from continuing his attack. But had he continued his attack, now he's he's probably got a bloody nose and his head head spinning and now I have that advantage as well. We gotta bring back the closed fist punch. It's a, it's a great tool. Uh, I think this would have been a great opportunity to use it. Well, and, and listen, the ability that says, no, I have the ability to use my hands and that takes more than the department is gonna train you with. I will guarantee you that Phoenix PD trains their officers better than this uh, and trains their officers to handle their business. Now I will say, I think the taser deployment was fine. Great and a good choice. But again, now you get inside there and you get to the place where, okay, well, if my barbs come out or whatever, dude kicks and now what am I gonna do? Well, listen, just because your taser fails does not authorize you to raise the level of force. And if I stop here again, you can see the guy's hands are empty. Now, can the officer be expected to continue to look at the hands? No, but if he cannot articulate that there was something in the hands, well, then he can't act on that. And, and again, just because your taser fails, does not authorize an escalation of force. The taser was the right level of force because the threat that you faced in the moment was not deadly if you are not don't have cover that has the, the, the opportunity to use deadly force. I know you've heard me say in this space before that not, not necessarily to rush in on someone unnecessarily. That doesn't apply here. And there's a couple of reasons why that doesn't apply here. One is that the person's actively trying to assault you, so you have to deal with it there and then. And you can't. You've used your your one really good distance tool is your taser. You've you've used that, and it, while it proved effective initially, now it's all of a sudden it's not so effective anymore. Now he's on his feet. Your taser's on the ground. There needs to be a plan B and a plan C and a plan D and E between. Uh, you know, my taser's now ineffective, and I'm going to shoot this guy. Um, and I think that's if we look back on the 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 video we we had not too long ago, where that rookie officer killed the young man who was sort of 
mostly passively resisting, but a, a little bit actively resisting. Um, we just got to do better. I think that's the bottom line here. I, this, this bothers me. It should bother you too. And, and again, that taser, it didn't work. Now what? Oh no, my tool didn't work that I expected to work. What am I going to do? And, and I just have a hard time here articulating objective, reasonable risk of death or great bodily harm. And, and here's the thing. Okay. So, so I get it when people are like, well, you know, law enforcement should, uh, you know, have the right to protect himself. He absolutely has the right to protect himself, but just like a private citizen has the right to protect themselves from physical harm, but only with proportional force, the same holds true for an officer. Now I'm going to tell you in Arizona, I doubt he's going to get charged criminally here because if I'm his attorney, I'm going to argue he's a protected person. What's actually happening to him under black letter law in Arizona is considered aggravated assault. And in Arizona, the justification of the use of deadly force includes stopping aggravated assault. And so if I'm his attorney, that's what I'm going to argue. And I don't think he's going to get charged for it for this reason. But I hope he gets fired, quite frankly, because I think this is poor use of force. And I think he should be held accountable for that. Yeah, I, I agree 100%, John. Um, you know, we, we've had other cases of police shooting unarmed people uh, where we might have said it was justified. Uh, in, in this case, I think the size disparity, this is not a huge, long, you know, large, muscular person. He, he you know, I, I just don't see where I could articulate if I were this officer that I had a reasonable fear of great bodily injury or death at this point, which is what you have to at least claim to have had going through your mind at the moment you pull the trigger. And I just don't see it. Uh, you know, it's kind of like the old Supreme Court. Someone asked him to define pornography and the, the chief justice says, I don't know how to define it, but I know it when I see it. This doesn't pass the eyeball test for me. For me. And listen, I love my, my hometown PD, okay? So I have several friends who are Phoenix police officers. And, and I, man, I want to give them every benefit of the doubt. And I think part of that is, is that we have to have high standards. And so that's why we call balls and strikes here. So listen, officers, hear me. Yes, your marksmanship skills are important, but your defensive tactics are important too. Yes, that may mean you need to invest some of your own time and money in getting to your empty-handed skills. That, that here, I, you know, isn't even like he needed some jujitsu. He needed some strikes. He needed some ability, whether that's Western boxing or some kind of striking art, Muay Thai or something like that. I think was was the answer here and not having that answer available to him he escalated the use of force to deadly and frankly I think we need to do better I think we need to train our officers better we need to hold them to that training better so that we protect our communities better and cover our ass